now at the entrance of Fort Canning Park. I'm walking through one of the paths here and right in front of me there's a plant with yellow flowers. It's a very beautiful plant. This is a Casia alata. The best very beautiful yellow flowers. And if you go up the steps, you come to another part of Fort Canning. I'm walking towards the path that is covered with red bricks, going towards the old cemetery. Now it's about 12.30 in the afternoon, but the weather here is, although it's hot outside, it's quite cooling inside here. And next I came to some wild chickens. They are running about foraging for food. There's no noise except for the chirping of birds. And I'm going up the slope towards the main gate and the old cemetery. Here I am in the Port Canning Nature Park and in front of me I could see some monuments, some sculptures, tall trees. These trees are perhaps uh, more than 100 years old and some people are relaxing on the benches here. Now although it's hot at this time of the day but it is quite cooling inside here because of the tall trees. And next to me are some trees bearing fruits, very beautiful fruits. They look like green apples but they are not apples. I'm slowly walking towards the main entrance. And there on my right there's a rain shelter where the grass cutters are taking a break after their lunch. Now this is a very quiet place very nice to walk and nobody will disturb you. I'm near the entrance of the park here where there's a wall, a white wall with a gate in between and the letters there IHS with a cross. Now I'm entering the park here, the central part of the park. And on my left, I could see some nutmeg trees. These are nutmeg trees and they bear fruit. The fruit is round. You can see from here that the nutmeg is slightly yellow in color. Right, you can see this nutmeg here yellow. And nutmeg is very useful as a spice. And it's also very nice to eat. I continue walking now towards the old cemetery. Now right in front of me I could see the old tombs. Very very old. Some of these are more than a hundred years old. Perhaps some are the burial graves of the early English settlers. Now originally this place was called Bukit Larangan or the Forbidden Hill. And this tombstone here with the cross says to the memory of Elliot Charles Beauville Knight Bachelor, Chief Justice of this colony. Now he died of cholera, contacted while on duty in 1893, age 45. And then in front of me it says in memory of Vladimir Astafi, late Lieutenant of the Imperial Russian Army, died in Singapore 1890 with a cross and then another tombstone here says here root Hans Hermann Eski general consul and he died in 1904 next to it is another big tomb with a name it says in affectionate and loving remembrance of Lee Kiao Soon John, 
the beloved husband of Madam Cecilia Cheng Hao Niu died 1927, aged 73 years RIP. This one is quite an elaborate one, so possibly the family was quite well off and erected this huge tomb to remember the deceased. And next to it is another tomb that says sacred to the mem memory of William Carpage, acting postmaster general in Singapore, died in 1872. There's a Carpage Road named after him. Right, some very old tombs here. Next one says in memory of Arthur Fox, eldest son of the late Major Fox, 79 Cameron Highlanders, died at the age of 28 years. Then the next one, also very old tomb, in memory of William Ronerson, son of Richard Ronerson, Howick, born at Riddle Roxburghshire. Scotland in 1844, died at Singapore in 1884, January. He was the late superintendent engineer, New Harbour Dock Company and president of the Engineers Association of Singapore. Erected by the employees of New Harbour Dock Company, members of the Engineers Association and friends as a tribute of respect to his many estimable qualities. Alright, as you can see, the park here has some very big space, lawns, and it's just in front of the Fort Canning Centre. Now this place has been used usually at night for concerts, rock music, and, and so on. So if you come here in the evening, you may be able to catch some concert or maybe some musical performance. Now it's a huge place. This space here is about the size of five football fields. So I am continuing my walk at the old cemetery. Here are some very old tombstones erected to remember the dead and those who passed away long, long ago. Now here it says. John, son of R.C. Woods Esquire, died 1846, aged 10 months. And sacred to the memory of the Reverend Robert Burns, son of Major General Andrew Burns, late chaplain of this settlement, born 1799, born again 1814, ordained in 1822, died 17 January 1833. Next, sacred to the memory of William Clark Farquhar, older son of the late Andrew Farquhar, who died at Singapore in 1848, aged 22 years. Very interesting place with all the old tombstones. The sacred to the memory of James Scott Clark Esquire, son of the late David Clark Esquire of London, who departed this life in 1851 at the age of 47. In front of me I could see some young girls walking down the steps. They came here to enjoy the fresh air and to also socialize with their friends. Some of these structures here are very old, erected many many years ago. Right next to a old fig tree, these are called the cupolas. Now these two monuments with dome shaped roofs are called the cupolas. A cupola is a small dome like structure or ceiling. They were designed by George Ramgul Coleman, a prominent architect in early colonial Singapore. Right, I'm near the Fort Canning Centre. Here below the trees you can see some Ferns, the Asplenium nidus. The tree here is very huge, very tall, possibly more than 100 years old. Then next, I come to some old tombstones here. It says sacred to the memory of George Nicholson who departed this life in 1855, aged 69 years. 
then to the memory of John Ball, Boswell, U.S. Navy. The Boston of U.S. Navy who died on board the U.S. ship John Adams in 1839. The next sacred to the memory of Anne Beck, wife of William Thompson who died in Singapore in 1863, aged 23 years. So some of them died very young, possibly in those days there was a lot of disease like malaria that claimed some of the lives. Then this is the Napier Monument. The white gothic structure is a memorial dedicated to James Cook Napier, the infant son of Singapore's first law agent, William Napier. James started at sea on board the HMS Meander at the age of just 5 months and 24 days. Next, sacred to the memory of Elizabeth and the beloved wife of George Plowden, Esquire. Bengal Civil Service who departed this life in Singapore in 1838, aged 22 years. So these are very old tombstones. Next, Captain Stevenson of Ship Santiago from Boston died in Singapore in 1850. He was born in Portland, USA. Right, very interesting place with a lot of historical sites and memories. come to another part where you see a lot of pandan leaves, the taro plant, the monstera, some black butterflies fluttering in the trees, then and a guava tree and also the sour sock. So a lot of fruit trees around here, very interesting place, banana trees. Bird nest fern, some trees with very nice flowers and fruits, and also there are some wooden benches provided by N Parks for those who are tired and want to take a rest. Now the sky is rather gloomy and it may rain soon. This tree is called the Garcinia atroviridis or Assam Galugo it bears green fruit so I continue my walk up the slope and I came to an old tomb a very very old tomb with a heart built over it so possibly this belongs to somebody who is quite well known this is the Karamat Iskandar Shah. Since 1822, this terrace has been regarded as a Karamat. According to local belief, Karamat are auspicious places to visit. Karamat places are often tombs. And in 1822, it was claimed that this site is a burial place of Sri Sultan Iskandar Shah. Now, nobody came here except the pigeons. The pigeons came here to visit the deceased. Quite an interesting place. And on the side, I could see the pandan leaves, the ginger plant. And also the chirping of birds. Now here you can also see on the right some very nice ginger flowers. These are the pots of ginger. Now the bud is used for cooking curries and also for Chinese rojak. So there's a path walking, going up the slope. And on my left, I could see another beautiful flower. This one is the small banana plant. Banana flowers, pink in color. You can see the banana trees here. And next to it is a very tall tree, the Patai tree or Pakya speciosa. 
The petai is an umbrella shaped tree that can grow up to 40 meters high. The flowers are long, creamy white and smell like milk. The chief product of the petai is a fruit which is eaten by many and is believed to be able to cleanse the kidneys. So petai is a fruit if you take out the husk and you use a seed to fry with prawns, you make a very good dish, especially when you add some sambal to it. Right in front of me, another banana flower, very beautiful, pink in color. <coughs> so, as you can see, the fig tree is very, very tall, possibly a few hundred years old. And on my left is a saraka tree with the orange flowers. Right on top is the old reservoir. Now this path is very well done, paved with some cobblestones, solid granite stones, I believe. And as you know, at this time of the day, there are very few visitors. No one to disturb you. It's quiet as a cemetery. But I like to visit those places that are out of the way those godforsaken places where nobody wants to visit like cemeteries, abandoned houses and so on right right in front of me I could see an old cannon very very old cannon and here a tree has fallen and you can see some ferns growing on top The end park has also provided some rubbish bins for people to throw their litter so that they help to keep the parks clean and tidy. So end parks has done a lot of good to keep the place clean. And on my right you can see the tiger orchids, but it's not blooming at this time of the day. This is a Bond Terrace, Major General Salina Vivian Bond. In 1961, joined the Royal Engineers in 1903. He fought in Mesopotamia. Between 1939 and 41, he was General Officer Company in Malaya. He retired in 1941 and was replaced by Lieutenant General Percival in May. Right here, you can see some swing seesaws to be used by children who come here to relax some fallen tree trunks and as usual, air parks ask people to wear a mask except when engaging in strenuous exercise so you can see the old cannon that looks down on the top of the hill right, it's painted in black colour the 9 pound cannon. This cannon is one of a pair which for many years were used as decorations for the main gate of Fort Canning. They were designed to fire 9 pound cannonballs. Very interesting place. Right in front I could see a lighthouse. And then another very nicely refurbished house. Now although it's hot outside, it's very cooling here because of the shade provided by the tall trees. So I continue walking towards the house. Very nice place. A brick house with strong walls, orange roof. And next to it are some frangipani trees, the plumeria rubra. Now you come to this very well-built steady house. I suppose this was built many many years ago. It's a Fort Canning Flagstaff. Now Fort Canning Hill became an important signal station after the British established a trading port in Singapore. So this was the Raffles House, the house on the hill. The earliest known sketch of the settlement 
1823 by Lieutenant Philip Jackson, the system engineer at that period, shows the town southeast of Bukit Larangan and northeast of Singapore River, viewed from the sea. So very nice place here. You can see some heliconias here. The Heliconia rostrata. Right in the background, you can see some tall buildings near the Clark Key. And next to this, I come to the desert plants. Those plants that do not require much water and next to it is the three very red colored flowers you can see this house from a distance it was renovated recently and now it looks very beautiful Taking a break here, sitting under the shade of a tree, and in front of me I could see a young couple taking photographs. They came here to socialize, to show their love for each other. Now the flame of the forest is in the background. The tree is spreading bunches, very bright red flowers. Now I'm walking down the slope now Right over there you can see Clark Key Central Next to it the Singapore River Now Fort Canning Hill is a very beautiful place Plenty of trees, flowers, shrubs very historical place then there are some signboards here that say the Raffles Garden the Revelicia Anodi is a very big flower and Sir Thomas Tanjad Raffles was the founder of modern Singapore and is remembered for his public life in the former British colonies in Southeast Asia now, Raffles' work left him with little time to explore his love for nature. He indulged his interest by supporting other naturalists and encouraging, encouraging their scientific inquiries. Right, you can see in front the, rema the remains of an old tree. This place is full of trees and some have very beautiful flowers. This is the cocoa tree, Theobroma cacao. And from these fruits, you get the cocoa fruit that is used to make your chocolates. You see this fruit here? It is half eaten by birds another cocoa fruit and you see a lot of big ants sucking the juice from the fruit but this is the lighthouse from a distance the flag post it says here Nathaniel Wallich was a Danish botanist and a former superintendent of the Royal Gardens in Calcutta. He visited Singapore in 1822 en route to China. It was here he befriended Sir Thomas Stanford Raffles. Another signboard that says Dr. Thomas Horsfield was an American physician and former chief surgeon of the Dutch Army in Java. 
Emmett Sir Stanford Raffles his friend in 1811 at the reception following the British invasion of Java. The day after they met, Raffles visited Horsfield to view his natural history collections. So I continue walking and I come to the fountain. A very beautiful fountain. Surrounded by a circular low wall. This is a Raffles garden. You can see the Raffles garden in brown color. There are fountains four on the front and four at the back and now I'm going down the steps towards Hunan Center you can see some very elaborate sculptures here they are, they are actually paintings done, done on the side of the wall somebody used possibly a chisel to cut the wall here to show the pictures of early Singapore some look like Japanese warriors well, I'm going down the steps towards Hill Street and soon I'll come to Funan Center I'm walking down the steps and these steps will lead me to Funan Center Hill Street. This is the entrance to the Park Park if you come in by Hill Street and North Bridge Road or South Bridge Road. Right here is the entrance of Fort Canning Park on Hill Street and the board here says Munshi Abdullah before you are the plant species that Raffles encountered when he first arrived in Singapore in 1819. This vegetation was described by his scribe Munshi Abdullah in the Hikayat Abdullah. Right, so here you can see Fort Canning at a glance, some old pictures, 